Hi, I'm Nam Bui with the Freedom Socialist Party, and this is a socialism.com fight back update. Today, we're discussing growing organizing and actions by frontline workers in protests of COVID-19 conditions. I'm here with Elias Holtz, New York City labor activist and television producer. Welcome, Elias. Hi, Na. Thanks for having me. In New York City, where the COVID crisis is most acute, healthcare and other workers are organizing. Tell us the latest. So yeah, they are certainly organizing. There's a growing rank and file protest among nurses um, are in the lead uh, against a real lack of protective equipment. Um, as you know, there's a real crisis of not having enough masks and gowns, but uh, this is also a failure of a lot of hospitals to have really safe setups and systems to keep their workers from uh, being infected by COVID-19. So there's been pickets in front of a number of hospitals here over the last couple of weeks by nurses and other healthcare workers uh, to protest this and to put pressure on the hospitals and also the federal government to uh, get them the supplies they need and uh, just ensure their safety as, as frontline workers. And uh, one of these hospitals, uh, Mount Sinai West, has a COVID-19 frontline task force, which is an alliance of not just nurses, but also other healthcare workers and doctors. Every single worker in the hospital is experiencing a major lack of protective gear. So it's, it's kind of interesting in these hospitals, normally their workforce is very stratified, you know, high paid uh, doctors and lower paid other medical workers, um, they're really all unifying more than ever before because they're facing the same struggles. And at this Mount Sinai Hospital, they've formed a more militant task force that had a demonstration actually calling for workers control of the medical industry. So that um, really shows growing organizing to protest the real lack of safety for those workers. What's been the official union response? So while these are rank and file organizations or organizing happening, um, the official union response has been pretty uh, tepid, to be honest. Um, the nurses union has really been the most out there, but other public worker unions like um, for healthcare workers like SEIU 1199, one of the largest unions in New York City, really haven't uh, been in the lead. The leadership hasn't been in the lead. It's been rank and file workers really organizing their own protests. And my boyfriend is a 1199 SEIU paramedic. He's represented by the union and he's had horrible experiences with real lack of gear and being exposed uh, quite dangerously to a lot of patients. And he asked the union um, what they were going to do about this or what the response was. And he got a, uh, in response, his rep sent him back a linked to the CDC guidelines, essentially saying that the, the union just was fine with what the government was proposing, which as we know has been watered down over time to really just reflect the scarcity of gear, not the actual science on what protects workers. And um, so the union response has been tepid and this is really because they don't wanna shame our democratic governor and mayor who have been doing press conference after press conference, uh, tooting their own horn at how good of a job they're doing protecting these workers and, uh, you know, um, blaming the federal government while shirking off any blame. And so I think the lack of response from the unions is leadership is really because they're tied in with Cuomo and de Blasio and the Democratic Party, and they don't want to embarrass um, their buddies in the Democratic Party. And that's really um, disingenuous because a huge part of the crisis is because of our local leadership closing hospitals. Cuomo has cut Medicaid, which is a huge source of funding for public hospitals, which are really in the middle of the South Brooklyn and Queens, huge numbers of infections. Um, they don't have as many beds as they used to because it's not profitable to have a bunch of beds laying around. So um, the democratic establishment is really responsible and uh, the rank and file workers, I think, are organizing the pressure in their unions to call them out and uh, make sure they take responsibility for this as much as Trump. Where do you see this organizing going? I think it's only gonna grow because the problems uh, have are growing. There's no massive magical shipment of masks and gowns and 
ventilators coming. Um, and clearly Trump isn't interested in mobilizing uh, manufacturing in the way that's needed. And so there is a growing call for workers control of the medical industry and obviously making it a nationalized uh, free public healthcare system has been on the in the conversation for a long time. But what shifted is workers control. So we don't want the government uh, and corporations to have any say in it. Healthcare workers and manufacturing workers are the best equipped to run the industry for the needs of all patients and workers. And so workers control of the medical industry is growing as a demand. I think it's going to become more popular and kind of build on the medical Medicare for all, um, you know, demand that obviously a lot of people are aware of now. And, um, I think we're going to see more strikes and possibly even strikes of hospital workers, which is of course, um, you know, they're kind of blackmailed into, uh, being silent or not taking any action or work stoppages because it would hurt patients. But I think it's really necessary for patients and workers to unite to stop this total lack of protection for those workers. So I think we're going to see more militant actions and uh, we should do everything we can to support them because every worker has a stake in uh, organizing and, and pushing back against the total lack of response by the government and corporations. We'll definitely watch these important struggles closely. Thank you for your report, Elias. Thanks so much for having me, Nah.